Okay, so hi everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, this is our last lecture of the semester. So thank you for um, making it. Uh, it's been a tough semester, but great. Uh, for the general announcements, I just wanted to start by thanking those that made this lecture possible. So if you had anything to do with the planning and organizing of this lecture, could you please raise your hand so we can see who. So thank you for that. And uh, this is the last lecture, so we are not having any lectures. We won't be seeing each other in this setting anymore, but we do have more activities planned for December and for the holidays. You're going to be looking around that. You're going to see a chimney and all of that. We'll let you know what that's about when that uh, comes closer. And I've, if for those who want to stay at the very end, we'll be having appetizers up there at the south uh, end of the building. And now I... That's all I've heard the announcement, so I'll pass it on to Professor Moreno. All right, thank you very much, uh, Antonia, for uh, doing the announcements. And she, uh, for those of you that don't know, she's uh, our, our president and I'm accompanied by, uh, I believe just about everybody that's in the Architecture Society. I thank you very much for working hard, hard this semester. I know it's been a hard one. Uh, we were used to, not being together for a year. So it was hard to kind of get back into things. And I think we've done very well. Uh, I, I don't believe we have any other announcements. Uh, I do know that we, we do have just about everything set up for, uh, for the spring semester. So um, we're, gonna, we're gonna start off with uh, Silvina Lopez Barrera in February, Cesar Lopez in March. And we're still looking into our, our third and final lecture but uh, we, we will we'll get there and I'll announce it when we get there. Uh, today's lecturer, our guest speaker, is a very good friend of mine. Uh, <clears throat> he and I met, uh, I won't say how long ago, but a good number of years working in a, a, a local firm. Uh, we were doing a joint venture, uh, doing a Chapin High School actually, didn't even have a name back then. Uh, and then later on, we both signed up for the first a group of, of students at, uh, in, in Juarez, in Yada, uh, to do a master's program. And that's where we became closer friends. And we even uh, flew up to Mexico City the same day to, uh, to present our thesis. And we got our, our degree the same day, too. No, <laughs> he's, he's saying no, he did. I remember it clearly. Um, and, then, uh, and then, of course, we've, we've all we've, we stayed in touch. And, and uh, he's helped me out in several uh, things, just like this lecture. And um, we were just talking about this. This is going to be his second lecture, but the first one was quite a good number of years ago. So it's a, I'm anxious to see what he's done since then. Everybody, Edgar Lopez. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody, to, for being. Uh, with us tonight, especially being this being Friday and this late, uh, this lecture is gonna last only like four hours and a half. I'm kidding. I hope not. If I will faint in the middle of the stage. Well, thank you. I'm so happy to be here with you and to share some of my stories and tell you what is what it shapes shape my work and what inspired me. They're, they're perfect for. Well, I'm so happy to be here with you, as I said, tell you, through, but I am representing, uh, I want to present some of the work uh, that I've done in my office. I represent um, a team that honestly, without them, we'll not able to do any, any of this. I know we architects love to work on a shell, on a bubble, uh, because we are so such an individuals, but architectural, is a team effort. So think about that. This is a, an array of uh, some of my latest work. And what I like is that it varies in so many aspects, so many fields uh, from residential, multifamily, urban planning, uh, Bhutanese style, retail, historic, uh, multi-purpose, um, <laughs> you name it. Uh, we're so glad that we have all kind of experience because these projects contribute to us to give us a broader perspective and vision in my practice. 
I always said, everybody knows this, uh, architecture is uh, one of the nine arts and, and is one of the oldest form of art, uh, along with uh, music and also with paintings. Um, <clears throat> they, they are such a closely uh, related. Emotionally, architecture is as complex and abstract as art. I mean, as you can see, even the partitures of the music represent architecture or, or the art itself, like a painting. If you dissect a song and you say, okay, this is the introduction, the body of the song, the high point, the bridge, and the conclusion. It's still a story, just like a painting. Architecture is like that. So any of these elements should be an inspiration for you to design anything. So grab inspiration from whatever, but these pieces of art or a song, it can be translated, translated easily to uh, an architectural piece. And I know in our, in our time, we need computers to be efficient, to be rational, to be on time, but I think drawings are the soul of our career, is the interconnection between I, hand and mind for what to translate our translate our, our ideas into paper to to pass the message the, the message that we have in our minds so thinking lines always thinking lines i know we're supposed to have this 3d mind that you think everything in 3d but translated to paper that is in 2d that eventually will come reality in 3d so like a painter who paint, who thinks in color, or the musicians thinking notes, we, we need to think in lines. Uh, some of my friends, when I'm talking too much, they just give me a pencil so I can start drafting and sketching. <laughs> so that I like that. Um, but imagine from the early caves, um, from the Nazca lines in Peru, from the Romans, who they start designing and creating streets and, and tracing cities. We haven't changed that much. We are still using our hands to put ideas. Uh, now we have to do it with a computer, but a computer is only a tool. It should not limit us. These are two of our, of our latest uh, projects, higher education. Uh, very similar in budget. They were actually simultaneously designed, very, very different in style. One is very formal, the uh, Medical Science Building 2 in Texas Tech. The, this one is the uh, IBRB, Interdisciplinary Research Building in UTEP. As you can see, one very formal, a little, the other one very, a lot more free. The one in UTEP, it was a long, narrow building that we initially start and we dissected and we break in, break it in notes and two different style. Uh, this one is the Bhutan, in the interpretation of the Bhutanese uh, style. And this one is the Spanish uh, Renaissance, resemble the Texas Tech campus in Lubbock. Uh, some of the interiors in the language you cannot see here, but those are the mandalas that, that we sketch. The mandalas are the, those little medallions that you can see on top of the buildings of the of the Bhutanese uh, architecture. Um, interior some very, very different, both of them. As you can see, uh, this is the nodes that we create in UTEP. Uh, this is also UTEP uh, inter interconnection on the node where the building breaks. So we create these spaces to, to students to interact and, and have connections impromptu. Um, perfect, this is, uh, some of these are Texas Tech. As you can see, the color resemble the colors of the school. Uh, and this is the canyon behind the UTEP, the UTEP building. Uh, and of course, both of them, they are designed to feed the site. That's why probably my firm's name is in C2, means on site. So we design accordingly to the site. We don't impose our design aesthetics and just put the building on one place. Uh, we architects shall be like, like a warriors. 
where we have to defend our design, but this defended with basis, not with a not, not on a wimp. Um, sometimes we have to marry so many elements. When you go to the workforce, you know you're gonna encounter the client desire, the program, the schedule, budget, and you're in the middle. You have to bring all those together and make them happen. And, and it's so rewarding when you have your ideas on paper and then become reality. Um, you know what happened to me? Uh, I noticed this uh, after I design a building, I don't visit anymore. And I feel because it's not mine anymore. That building belonged to the user. It's not mine. It was, I had the opportunity to make it mine when I was designing it. So enjoy your building, your project when you're, when it's on the drafting table, because it's when you have the opportunity to make decisions and to make a change. After that, it's not yours anymore. It's like your childhood is getting married. They go away. <laughs> Let's see, next. Some of, um, how can I say this? This is the story of my life. I always get surrounded by talent. Uh, probably I was the most burro del salon, but I always look for my friends who were smarter than me, better looking than me, funnier than me, and I will learn something from them. Everybody has something to share. So learn from them. Um, probably my, uh, my business partner, partner, Bill Helm, has a lot, of more, a lot more qualities than me, uh, but I'm better looking than him. <laughs> so, so some of our projects start with the sketching, seeing the program, other ones researching. In this case, we start looking for and and the history because this is sorry this is the public restroom restrooms in San Jacinto Plaza. So we know that it was a building there that we had to remodel remodel inside and outside, and we know that it was history. We don't know what kind of history because it was covered with mirrors, as you can see on this picture. And we're like, why is covered with mirrors? We find out through the history that it was a. Uh, a yearly store, the later on they, they had another floor and become Arby's and the facade was so funky that it was so plain. So it was nothing to rescue. And we studied the history to see if there was something that we can reuse and bring it back to life. So, so then we said, what can we inspire us to do something with this building? Because it's so important. It's between an historic building on one side, that is the banner and the crest building. And the crest is in the process to be historic. So it was very important to not overwhelm those two buildings, but to do something to have, that had their own character. So we study the regional architecture that is the territorial style. The territorial style is, uh, is a merge between the Pueblo style of this region made out of adobe and the Queen Anne or Victorian that it comes from the, from the East Coast. And of course, the Victorian is so ornate, a lot of moldings and, and a lot of details and versus the Pueblo that is so plain, but when they merge on this region, uh, they use brick to protect the brick, to protect, protect, to protect the, the dobby. So the cornices, windows around this, they, surroundings, they made out of brick. And the best example that we have here in Juarez, Segundo Barrio here in El Paso, Mesilla, even Las Cruces and even Albuquerque and, and, and Tucson. So, so we did a research. I said, what can we do? So these are just a photograph research that we did that we present to, a, to the client. I said, okay, this is how we're, we're gonna approach this building. We're gonna use a history of our city and we're gonna make this building different than what it is. We're gonna remove the mirrors, but we're gonna use brick that is uh, historic. And one thing that we did over here, and I always use so many tools to make my buildings more buildings more pleasant and better proportion. So I use the golden rule and the golden rule I use it all the time. 
on all my designs. That's only one tool that I use up after many. So why we noticed this building was too short to have the proportions. So we had to raise it a few feet. As you can see, we had to present several materials, several colors, several fenestrations. And this one was a sketch that I did in initially, and then now computer generated. And of course it's so important because it's a public building, materials and colors are very important because of the heavy use, low maintenance. Second floor is a, is a city office that, that needs, needs to have a, a conference room for visitors of the city that it can be open. So that window open completely three, all the way so you can experience San Jacinto Plaza. As you can see, uh, you can see the Crest building, the Plaza building behind. So it's a, it's a history right next to this building. And uh, you can see uh, some of the elements um, inside and, and outside of the, of the building. Uh, let me tell you something. Uh, our career is a journey. It's not a destination. It will take a long time for you. And I know most of you, are from a generation that usually get an instant gratification and in so many ways. I'm sure you've been accused of entitlement, being lazy or narcissism. But do you know, I don't think it's your fault. And we're living on this time of perpetual and instant communication. Just the idea uh, for me a few years ago that calling someone and hopefully they are home in order for them to answer the phone. Now for you guys have to immediately respond. You know immediately if they ignore you or they answer to you. And that a few years ago cannot happen. So that gives you a rush and your brain create a dopamine and you get addicted. We all get addicted to social media, to internet, to cell phones. What can we do about it? It's not your fault, it's the generation, it's the, the environment that we create for you. We need to do something for future generations to balance technology and life. This is very important project. This one uh, fell in, in our laps, we not even compete for it. But it was so important and very responsible, responsible because it's a gateway that uh, access our country is, is, is in, El, in El Paso Street, coming from Juarez. And it was so difficult because you knew that it's not a building and, and hide it with landscaping exactly. I mean, some of our buildings are so ugly that you love them as a kid, but, but you have to hide it somehow. You, you, it's, like, it's like your wife's family, but you still love them. But this one we can. So in this case, we have to start thinking and creating elements to bring people together to provide safety, most of it, um, accessibility, uh, icons like, a, like a, an archway. But on this case, we uh, involve the community because we want the community to be part of it. And we present ideas and ideas and forms and materials, as you can see, uh, we introduced several elements. We like like an archway, like a sign-in, like a signage, uh, parklets, uh, walkways, uh, a pedestrian crossings. Uh, so many elements. So what, what I like about this is that that the community was able to pick and choose what they want, so they feel like they are being part of it, and they are now they own this project. It's not our, ours anymore. And it becomes so successful that, that now several street uh, festivals, they are on the streets. Uh, now, uh, so even a, a dinner for more than 400 people, it was a few months ago there under the inverted vault of lights. And, and one of the history of this one, I took so many elements of the local architecture that it has uh, Art Deco. So you can see, you, you can, you can, this is the, the Cologne Theater spike, star spike. And there are so many elements from the, from the Plaza Hotel, from the 
um, center building, even on, you can see it on the floor, but so I pick so many elements from all of them and make it one. And it's, it's now, now it's original. So Juarez, when they saw that um, it was a successful project that bring people, to, people together and it creates safety, they put the project on the street and they call for, for a project for an architect. And when they received the, the submissions, they, they didn't like any. So they invite us to meet with officials. We meet with them. And as a, as a symbol of friendship, we give the project away to Juarez. And what a better pay that, uh, that they build it later on. But there are many elements, as you can see here. It's, um, now it's a lively street. There are places where people can rest. And La Abuelita can sit while, while somebody's uh, shopping. That it was not there before. One of the tasks, the most difficult that we that I see in our profession is that that we don't listen. Uh, sometimes, with our client, is telling us, uh, "I got a new project. I want this and this and that," and we already our mind is flying, and we start, you know, solutions and ideas, and and we stop listening to him. You need to learn how to listen. Write it down. What he said is so important. Because once we present the project, they're going to say, I asked you for this and you're not even presented. What's, what you were thinking? You're, I don't want you as an architect. You need to listen to other people, not only to your clients. Everybody has something to say. I mean, if you're in a room, on a conference room, or in your classroom, be the last one to speak. Let everybody speak. And then you're thinking, why are they asking that question? Why are they in that position? At the end, they speak your mind. You're going to sound a lot more smarter than the rest because now you have an educated idea, an educated uh, position. You can see on the, on the upper right corner, that's the archway uh, on the south side is Juarez. So we got commissioned by the city to continue with that project, with the improvements. And, and this is San Antonio and El Paso Street, but the, the improvement will be all the way to Mesa Street. But on this project, our approach was to take the pedestrian. So the pedestrian was the most important uh, element on this, on this design. So we introduced a series of uh, calming devices that you can see over there around about uh, widening the streets from five feet to 17, 18 feet, bringing landscaping, bringing urban furniture, uh, drinking fountains, benches, trash cans. And then uh, in the middle is a Pioneer Park. In Pioneer Park, we expanded with a traffic table that at certain times that park can blur the lines between pedestrian and vehicle traffic. So as you can see, everything, we start with sketches, hand drawings. It's so magical of the hand, the hand feeling that people appreciate. We start losing that, that, that talent because computer tried to replace us, but it's nothing. The computer is only a tool, but it cannot replace your hand. As you can see, that was one of the first ideas, the sketches, sketches, sketches. And that was the master plan of the, uh, one of the portions. This is the, the Pioneer Plaza. Initially, was having a water feature, but by liability, they didn't want to do it. So your project evolve. Don't marry to your first ideas. Let it flow. I, there are so many forces that they make gonna make your project shape on a different way. Okay, next. Well, I know it's so hard to develop your own uh, style, and actually, I don't recommend it. I think you need to let other elements to design that style. I hate to impose my, my aesthetics and my style on every building. Like I said, my, my, my firm in C2 means in place. And we are true believers that every project has to be different to fit the site, to fit the orientation, to meet the budget, uh, even program, schedule, materials. Um, Our, the experience, it's so hard to get experience, especially you need so many years. 
there is a rule that I didn't know that exists. And this rule applied to every, every field, not only the architectural. Uh, they call it the 10,000 rule. It's supposed to be the, the time that you need as experience to become proficient or to, to be excellent on your field. Um, it's so hard because of us, us as an architect, uh, we're supposed to be on the peak of our career when we're under 60, 70 years old. So that means like 80,000 hours of experience. You only had like 1%. Good luck. <laughs> I'm, I'm almost there. <laughs> and this is one of our most beloved projects probably because it keeps us alive as a firm when we start. And talking about experience, we didn't have the experience to, to design an indoor 15 meter competition pool. <laughs> so as, as I was saying, when we were coming to this uh, project, we won the project, we didn't know nothing about pools, but we architects are trained. When you get out of the school and you start your master, we are trained to resolve problems. We don't know everything but we are trying to investigate through research and compare and bring ideas and bring knowledge and become, and, and become an expert because that what happened after we finished this, we were commissioned to do the second indoor 50 meter uh, pool in town. And that was much better and much larger than this one. We actually have a project, uh, I mean a budget. And what it was difficult on this, this uh, project, I remember the, 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 our client gave us a, a, a very, very small budget. And they give us such a large program that we had to marry both. And at the beginning, we told them, this is impossible. This, this is impossible. We, you cannot make a swimming pool for that much money. So we had to educate not only the client, but the I mean, community here in El Paso that is so vocal that have been asking for so many years for a competition pool. And they have this large uh, program. They, they, I want this, I want that, I want that. So finally we say, okay, let's, let's come together. Let's put them on the table, give them features that they desire, like, um, like a 10 meter uh, diving board, the, the pool this deep, they want this material, they want this. And okay, I was like, okay, we're gonna put a cost for any, every of those features and we give them monopoly money. I said, now you as a user and as a client, you need to buy the features and then you make the decision, not us, because we're not the one who put in the money. So they understand at that moment that they didn't have enough money. They were so happy because they are the one who picked the, the features. We didn't impose them. So sketches again, sketches again. Oh, and one thing, this canopy was designed almost to the end of the project. It was the entrance, the main entrance. It was a, a polished copper floating canopy that it was gonna cost about $100,000. When we get invited to select the artist, because every, um, government project here locally, 10% of the budget goes to an art piece. So I'm glad that we were, we were involved in the selection. So we met these artists. Well, they give you a bunch of artists to select. And we saw these artists, there is an architect from uh, France, but, but uh, lives in, in, in New York. And he created these pieces, uh, more like a puzzle. Amazing. Now it's all over the world. I think when we, we, this, we did this, it was not as famous as it is right now. Right now, you go to Paris, you go to Dubai, you go to so many places in the world and you see his sculptures. And now it's super famous and super wealthy. At that point, he was not. But we had the vision to tell him, okay, your piece will be perfect at the entrance of our pool. So we save $100,000 that we can put it somewhere else and your budget that is already part of the budget, the art, the art component. So we suggested to put it on the entrance and that's not a rendering. It's actually a picture of the, of the art piece. You can see it over here. So 
one thing on this project is the location. The location allow us to face the mountains. You cannot bring a single ray of sun because it's a competition and we want to bring a lot of light. So we position this building at the exact uh, orientation to only have sun maybe like on 30 minutes during the morning, early, early, early morning in certain types of uh, times of the, of the year. Uh, this project is, 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 this is in Las Cruces. It's a dental, uh, Las Cruces Dental Plaza. We get up every, every building you learn so much. Um, it was very interesting that the, it was five different owners on a single lot, five different dental practices. Everyone was a different, uh, very exclusive uh, 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 practice of dental. So we're like, you guys, five owners, five different practices in one building, that's gonna be very complicated. Why we don't do separated, separate buildings on a single lot, but let's treat this as a family where every is like a sibling. They have the same elements, the same language, but they connected it. So, so you park on one, on the building, on the, on the lot, you can go to one or to another, but using the materiality, the proportions, the layer, and it was very successful. And I cannot say this enough. You guys, please copy. Copy everything. Copy everything in your life. Copy your heroes. Copy your professor, your mentors. Copy ideas. That's your work. Copy ideas from everywhere. And copy values. Copy good education. Your mom is going to be so proud of you when they find out that you are amazing. But they said, don't copy one, copy many. Because if you copy one, that's plagiarism. And when you copy many, that's research. <laughs> it's, just, it's true, that's what I do. <laughs> uh, this little building, probably this little building has so many, has so many memories. I remember walking, this is, this is the main post office in Juarez. For me at that time, when I was a little kid by the hand of my mom, it looks huge. And I remember walking into the lobby and, and hearing all this noise because it was not an absorbent material of noise. It was all reverberation. It was all marble and granite and the walls and the chandeliers and the people walking and I was like, oh my God, this is beautiful. I was, I was mesmerized by this little building. Uh, years later, I realized that it was not the building that gave me these memories. It was the path from the bus station to the, to the main post office, walking in these narrow uh, sidewalks, five foot sidewalks, where there are all kind of obstacles uh, between dogs and benders and the cars and the water puddles and, and the noise and the smog and everything. It was such a good experience because it's kept on my mind for so many years. So is the way that we experience the city that it gives us those memories. And we don't do that anymore because now we travel in a rush, in a car, and, and we don't see the city of us, us when we travel to other places. Because when we travel to other places, we don't have the car. Or you rent an Uber or drive a bus or the metro or walk or sit on a park and, and observe people because how fascinating it is to observe people. And every city has so many things to do to give you, especially experiences. So these are pictures that I take from some of my travels. You might see that 90% of my pictures, I'm not on it. Because nobody believe me that I've been there because I'm always taking pictures of buildings. And if somebody's not taking pictures of me, taking pictures of the buildings, I'm not on the picture. That's my business partner and me in Tokyo. And of course, we didn't pay attention to whoever we were. We just touching the buildings and taking pictures because we love we love architecture. We live, uh, read, and sweat architecture because it's, it's our passion. And 
of course, I take pictures of cats and dogs and, and people and graffiti. And, and those things are the ones that you, re, you remember for the rest of your life. So, and there's me, super strong, with my better shirt. So there is a proof that I was in Bilbao. And so when you travel, copy everything, even copy a building and then show it to your professor as your own. And he never know because he never traveled. <laughs> but they're amazing cities. Those cities are so amazing. It doesn't matter if they have resources or not. Like San Miguel versus Hong Kong, complete different. But they have a lot of public spaces that you don't, that you that you love to see it. That you walk and that you see it. Even the 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 width of the sidewalks, or you can see it and and see the uh, the the, the passerbys or the people walking or riding. Or it's amazing. And every city has something to give. And now. It's your responsibility to, to make your city better for, for future generations. You are the one who can push it because I know you're going to desire to live in a city where you can walk, where you can ride your bicycle to work because the problem on the city is not the sprawl. The sprawl, it's okay because we have to grow more than 60% of the population on the war, of the world live in cities and we're not going back. The problem with the sprawl is the divide and divide the economic from one side to another. Doesn't allow you to experience nature. And, and there are several cities that the, the best examples like, like Dubai. Dubai, amazing city, it's like Disneyland. Where you, you want to see every, every building. The, the, the sidewalks, they are so wide, but nobody walk on it. They are leading to nowhere. There are no public spaces, unless the mall, you call it public spaces, that will be so wrong. There is no places to meet in Dubai. Uh, you can see, look at look, the street, there is a very in the middle and, and to find a, a crosswalk is a mile on the side. Um, this is an amazing building in Peru. Then later on, I find out it wasn't a magazine that received awards, but when you go there, is so dry, it's so sterile because they didn't bring nature into the building. It's a university for women. No, not a single piece of greenery I saw in this building. In other buildings, uh, some exercises from Le Corbusier or, or Costa, like, like Brasilia, uh, it's an experiment, really bad. So the passion and the culture of the Brazilian doesn't like to have something pre-made is like very Latino. They want something more uh, impromptu or Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo, huge city, buildings everywhere. It's easy to travel on helicopter than on land. This is a best example of a sprawl. It's mega sprawl. Um, and of course we know the freeways. The freeways are the probably that were most problem because they divide us so much but there is a a good urban plan that i know that it can resolve those issues it's katsila <laughs> going back to this little building that i was telling you at the beginning um, the, probably this is um the reason why i am what i am that i am an architect and and i love to create uh, better than to consume because it's better to create greater than consumer on it on every field um, and i i have the opportunity to travel to live and work not only on, on this country but also in mexico and i always said edgar when you travel and when you go back to your region to back to live Bring whatever you experience, whatever you learn, and make your, your city, your region better. Because that's going to be a different, make, it's going to make a difference for someone. Um, honestly, it's so rewarding, our, our career, our profession. Uh, when you walk in and you see a building, and, and you know that you 
are part of the reason why that building is there. Hopefully, that building survived you or survived me, unless they demolish it because it's very ugly. And <laughs> but I hope that building uh, make an impact on, on somebody. Uh, thank you. Perfect. So we made it in time. Is yes, of course. Yes, 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 yes. No, <laughs> never happy. The, the problem is, well, first you answer your first question. First question. Um, I sketch so much, constantly. I mean, I have my iPad watching Netflix and I'm sketching and sketching and sketching and sketching because it's my passion. Sometimes I don't know where that sketch is gonna go. And I say, okay, I'm gonna find inspiration on, on this plant. What can I get from this plant? And let's see the note, let's see the leaves, let's see. And everything can inspire you, even a song, like I was telling you, even an art piece, everything is inspiration. Um, and I'm, I hope that I never, I'm never satisfied with one design because you are always thinking, what else can you do for that? So always, always your mind is evolving. That's what I'm saying. At one point I have to stop. And I say, this is not my project anymore. I'm done. I have the opportunity to do something when I was designing it. I had the opportunity to make a difference, to make an impact on somebody, hopefully, but not anymore, it's built. It, you never stop, your mind never stop. And then I'm glad that you have uh, so many projects to move on to the next one and then the next one, because as I tell you, they are like children. You love all of them, even if this one is ugly, but you still love them because it's yours. You create it, you create that project. And, and you remember when you're when you walk into a building, let's say like this, and you say, oh, I remember when I did that detail. That was 10 years ago. And I remember that it gave me so much trouble, but it's part of mine. Not anymore. It's, it belongs to somebody else, to the user. Wow, it's so difficult to have a favorite, probably my, my favorite. Uh, and I think when an architecture make you, uh, make your skin chinita and, and my eyes uh, green, that's a building. And that was La, La Sagrada Familia. La Sagrada Familia, and I've been there several times and every time they're like oh my god this is amazing but there is a lot of psychology on that building because that building is gothic and i don't know if you've been there but the entry vestibule is very small like every gothic cathedral that is very small very tiny very dark that make you feel human soon that you walk into the nave you feel like you are nobody, that you are in God's place because it's immense, it's huge, it's tall. You feel like you are nobody. I'm at the mercy of God. But that's the ecology of the, of the God. And, and it, I mean, you went to, go to Dubai, you were mesmerized by the, by the Burj Khalifa tower. You go to... Guggenheim in, 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 in Bilbao, and it's amazing. But needless to say, there are other buildings in many other places that they are outstanding. 
It doesn't matter the budget. It's the meaning, it's the materiality that you see when you see a Zaha Hadid building that is another of my heroes. I want to hug them. And there are pictures of me hugging the pictures, like touching them because they're amazing. It makes you feel something. And I don't know what it is. I don't know what makes a city better, especially some elements. The same thing with architecture, you feel it. The face how it flows, the energy, the, the users, there are so many things, but there are many buildings that they are, um, they are amazing. And, and the religion architecture gives so much power and money to the years and um, churches are amazing. I'm not a fan of those, but I'd be seeing this as an architectural. My God, they are incredible. If you have the passion for this career, continue, never ever desist. Don't let anybody bring you down. Um, architecture, you're gonna breathe, sweat, and, and live every day. And it's so beautiful to be an architect. Thank you, Edgar, for this wonderful lecture. We truly appreciate it. We appreciate your time and effort that you put into it and all the wonderful advice you gave the students. I would also like to thank the Architecture Society for putting in some very, very uh, hard work into putting these lectures together and putting these interviews that we will be introducing later this semester as well uh, together. And uh, I would like to thank the faculty for their support. And most of all, I would like to thank all of you who join us, whether live or on Zoom, uh, we wouldn't be able to make these possible without your participation. And with your participation, it gives us the energy and the, the willingness to do these lectures and continue doing these lectures. So we can't wait for next semester, the spring, so that we could bring you some more exciting lectures. Thank you, and I will see you again.